Senator Rocha. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I rise to make a small contribution in this, the International Year of Solidarity with the Palestinian People, a year that was designated by the United Nations late last year as a year to promote solidarity with the Palestinian people and to contribute to international awareness of the core themes regarding the question of Palestine. After the, the resumption of peace talks in July last year and ahead of the first deadline of April 30 this year, Today I add my name with the many other Australian federal politicians from all persuasions and with the many other politicians from around the world to recognise that 2014 is a critical year for the peace talks between Israel and Palestine, to recognise that as a middle power with a position on the United Nations Security Council, Australia has a responsibility to foster this debate a responsibility to highlight issues of concern and to independently support the ongoing peace talks. The International Year seeks to highlight the core obstacles to the ongoing peace process, including the illegal settlements in the occupied territories, the question of Jerusalem, the blockade of Gaza and the humanitarian situation in the occupied Palestinian territories. A recognition of the difficulties is vital in the process of reaching the two-state solution securing an independent, viable and sovereign Palestine, living in peace and security with the State of Israel, where each recognises the other's legitimate rights. We must mobilise our nation as a part of the global action towards the achievement of a comprehensive, just and lasting solution of the question of Palestine. In doing so, we must have regard for the almost 70 years of history through the United Nations and the centuries of history before that. In launching the International Year on 16 January this year, the Secretary-General of the United Nations, Mr Ban Ki-moon, issued a clear statement that this year of solidarity is critical in the resolution of the aforementioned issues, critical in the formation of a State of Palestine, critical in the continuation of the State of Israel and critical in our world's journey to ongoing peace in the Middle East. I quote, today marks the launch of the International Year of Solidarity with the Palestinian people. This will be a critical year for achieving the two-state solution, bringing an end to the occupation that started in 1967, and securing an independent, viable and sovereign state of Palestine, living in peace and security with the state of Israel, where each recognises the other's legitimate rights. The Secretary-General stressed that the international community must work together and that the leadership of both Palestine and Israel must both display immense political will and live up to their commitment to a negotiated two-state solution. And I quote, I call on all members of the international community, and in particular Israelis and Palestinians, to work together for justice and a durable peace. Israel and Palestine need to live up to their commitment to a negotiated two-state solution and resolve all permanent status issues in accordance with Security Council resolutions, the Madrid Principles, the Roadmap, the 2002 Arab Peace Initiative and existing agreements between the parties. The leaders of Israel and Palestine will need political will, a sense of historic responsibility and a clear vision for a better future for this and future generations. I pledge to do my utmost in support of their efforts. The Secretary-General's statement highlights that this international year is not partisan. It places significant emphasis on the security of both the Israel and Palestinian populations and the importance of leadership from both sides. What would be tragic for our country, for Australia, as a home to many Israelis and many, many Palestinians, would be for little or no progress to be made over this year of solidarity, <coughs> would be for our government to adopt a position out of step with other nations on the Security Council, out of step with other nations in the Western European and others group, and out of step with the Australian community and for our opportunity to contribute to this peace talks by fostering debate and recognising the serious wrongs committed by both sides would be lost. Would be lost through no, not through an articulation of our clear position on this matter, but lost through our silence. Lost through our government adopting an approach of making a decision, but not taking the time to explain this to parliament and not taking the time to explain it to the people of, of uh, Australia. 
We need to view the Year of Solidarity as an opportunity for us as a parliament and for us as a nation to look at how we can assist this process for the benefit of both Israeli and Palestinian communities both here and in the Middle East. Not dismiss it as an attack on the Israeli people, but to use the opportunity to look at how Australia can affect a fair and balanced approach on this very important matter. I was pleased to attend the Australian launch of the International Year of Solidarity with the Palestinian people on Monday afternoon here at Parliament House. The launch was organised by the member for Cornwall, the member for Reid and the member for Fremantle under the auspices of the Parliamentary Friendship Group for Palestinian and Palestine in the United Nations Parliamentary Group. The launch was attended by over 70 people including members of parliament and senators from all parties, ambassadors, DFAT officers, members of the local Palestinian community and advocacy groups, as well as representatives from the international Australian charity The Global Gardens of Peace. Speakers included Ambassador Izzat Ab Abdulali, the head of the General Delegation of Palestine to Australia, New Zealand and the Pacific, Mr Christopher Woodthorpe, the Director of the United Nations Information Centre for Australia, New Zealand and the South Pacific, and Bishop George Browning, the President of the Australian Palestinian Advocacy Network. Every speaker made a value, valuable contribution to the event. But I want to highlight Bishop Browning's response to a question about political will on the questions of Palestine in Australia. Bishop Browning was emphatic that Australian politicians are out of step with the views of the mass, vast majority of our community and the vast majority of the leadership of like-minded countries. He was emphatic that there was a clear majority of Australians who supported a two-state solution, who supported an end to the conflict and who supported ongoing peace. And that I point to the work of the Ad Australian Pal Palestinian Advocacy Network. It is a multi-faith, non-political organisation headed by a small secretariat. Many of us have met with APAN on a number of occasions, and I encourage others who have not to log on to their website, give them a call and have a discussion with its members who co comprise Australians of Jewish, Islamic and Christian faiths, as well as non-religious Australians, as they go about their tremendous advocacy work. Sadly, when the matter of the designation of the International Year came up before the United Nations, Australia was one of just seven nations to vote against the motion. While 110 countries supported and 57 abstained, Australia moved to seek a defeat of the motion. And on the question of settlements, instead of conti continuing to condemn this illegal occupation, as Australia had done under the Labor government, the government joined only eight countries in abstaining from the vote defying the 158, including many conservative Western governments. The government was one of just five countries to abstain and six to vote against the motion that Israeli was an occupying power, should be forced to comply with the 1949 Geneva Conventions. 160 nations supported ordering Israel to comply scrupulously with the conventions. A section of the Geneva Conventions, which this government has moved to no longer support in regard to Israel and Palestine, states the occupying power shall not deport or transfer parts of its own civilian population into the territory it occupies. Changing our vote on Israeli settlements in Palestine by this government does nothing to help that process. And what concerns me deeply is why are we changing our vote? Why are we backing away from taking a bold, independent stance? So far, I don't believe the government has outlined its case to change Australia's position at, and at such a crucial time in the peace negotiations, at a time where Israel continues to expand its settlement activity in the occupied Palestinian territories. Settlement activity that the United Nations condemned, uh, condemns as against international law. Settlement activity that must cease for peace to occur. Australia, under this government, is changing its position and condoning these moves. And members of this government use this chamber as an op opportunity to make divisive, aggressive comments about the question of Palestine. Last week, Senator Sir, George, Sir Selger used some terrible logic as he is seeking to criticise members of this place who support a Palestinian uh, state. And I quote, when you look at the treatment of gays and lesbians and women in Israel in comparison to other parts of the region, you see they get support from those who claim to be strong supporters of gay and lesbian rights and women's rights." And I, uh, end quote. After the senator's speech, Ms Sam 
uh, Samhar Sabawi, an Australian Palestinian writer, wrote an open letter in response, of which I would like to share a part, and I quote, Sir, you always fall into the trap of mentioning women's rights and gay rights in Israel. You ignore the countless women under Israeli occupation who are forced to have their babies at checkpoints. You turn a blind eye to the thousands of children who are arrested, some as young as five, by Israeli soldiers and tried in military courts. You ignore the dearth of human rights abuses committed by Israel every single day. And let me tell you, being gay is not some superpower that allows Palestinians to fly over checkpoints. And I end the quote. Ms Sabawi's words clearly rebut Senator Selger's assertions, and I thank her for her efforts. As a country, we need to be better than casting those types of aspersions. We need to be better than stringing together false logic to slander one side or the other. And that is why it is wonderful to conclude this speech with a positive story, a story of hope, a story of the Australian spirit at its best. Yesterday was the parliamentary launch for the Global Gardens of Peace, an initiative of Moira Kelly, AO, famous for her work assisting impoverished children in developing or war-torn countries gain access to first world medical care. In 2004, Ms Kelly was on a trip to Gaza and visited the Commonwealth War Cemetery. During her meeting with the Palestinian Authority, she remarked that the cemetery was the only beautiful space in the area and that Australia would build the children and families a garden. Three years later, Ms Kelly was visited by a Palestinian representative who gave her a title to a small parcel of land in a former settlement. At the time, her priority was caring for the conjoined twins that captured so many of our hearts, Trishna and Krishna, as they underwent their operation and the garden project was put on hold at that time. In 2012, Miss Kelly began recruiting a team of experts and by the middle of last year, 20,000 square metres of land was secured in Khan Yonis. A board was appointed and workshops were underway with the local community to identify their exact wants and needs. The staff at the Melbourne Botanical Gardens have been tremendous leaders in this project, with Mr Andrew Laidlow, the chief land landscape architect, and his team designing a garden as a replica of the children's, children's garden at Melbourne, with appropriate alterations as requested through consultation. Ms Kelly and the committee are determined that this garden is a gift from the Australian people to the people of Gaza. The fundraising task is large. $5 million is required, and I would encourage all Australians to give generously. It's a tangible project that epitomises the good in Australians and, in a small way, the international year. This humanitarian project is breaking barriers between people, breaking barriers between borders, with so far the Israeli government providing no impediment to the movements of supplies into Gaza for the garden. While the debate ensues between politicians, the work on this garden is giving those children and families in that region some peace, and I thank all who are working towards a peaceful solution in the region. I call on our government and I call on the Israeli and Palestinian governments to do everything they can to continue the negotiations and to find a resolution, and a resolution particularly in this year, the UN Solidarity uh, of Peace uh, in Palestine. Thank you.